having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having one of them harps and golden vials full of order, orders, which are the prayers of the saints. Verse 9, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us. Did you hear that? Redeemed who? The elders. The elders. To God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So who are these elders? These elders come up out of the grave when Jesus was put upon the cross, correct? At his resurrection, who come up? These elders. The Bible talks about them walking around, right? What did, it, what did the Bible say about two or three witnesses? No, no one shall be put to death. There's 24 elders, right? That sit up there in heaven. How many personalities did they say we had? You can argue it, but there's 12, I believe, right? 24 elders. Is that not two? Two Johns? Two Raymonds? Two Deborahs? Hmm. Just a little thought. Exodus 20. Exodus 20. What's in Exodus 20? The law. Ooh. The law. Why did God have to write the law in stone? Because our hearts were too hard, huh? Do you think God wanted to write it on the stone? I don't think so. I think God wanted to write it in our hearts. He wanted to write it in our minds. So the covenant was written on stone. Am I, is that correct? <coughs> all the, all that the Lord has said, all that the Lord has said, the people said what? We will, we will do. do. We will do. Right response, wrong dependence, right? Right response, wrong dependence. I'm going to wrap this up quick because we're running out of time. Hebrews 7, Hebrews chapter 7, let's begin in 25. Wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost and come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us, became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's? For this he did once when he offered up himself. Amen. For the law maketh men priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the Son who is consecrated forevermore, brothers and sisters. Starting in chapter 8. Now of the things which have we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched, and not man. Listen, brothers and sisters, there is a sanctuary in heaven. There's much of the world that knows nothing about the sanctuary in heaven. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifice, wherefore it is necessary that this may have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve as an example and shadow of heavenly things. 
as Moses, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle, for see, saith he, that thou makest all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. There's a pattern, huh? There's a pattern in heaven that this sanctuary was built on, this earthly sanctuary. We need to become intimate with the sanctuary because the sanctuary, brothers and sisters, is God's plan of salvation. Beginning in verse 6. But now hath he ordained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should be no place had been sought for the second. And what's these next five words? For finding fault with them. Who's them? People who said the promise. The people that said all that the Lord has said we will do, right? So there was nothing wrong with the covenant at all, no. correct? That's right. The problem was with the people. Amen. He said, Behold, the day comes, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them unto their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Praise the Lord. You hear that, brothers and sisters? Amen. Amen. There was nothing ever wrong with the covenant. The problem was with, with us. If Brother John, who I haven't seen in such a long time, it's wonderful to see your face, brother. Let's just say that he had a house up in Hiawassee, Georgia. And he wanted to sell it to Susan and I. And we were real interested in buying that house. And we made an agreement. We made a covenant. We made a contract on that house. And John said to Susan, because she's the one with all the looks and the money, <laughs> you give me $5,000 and that'll be the down payment on this house. And then when the month is up, I'm expecting the rest of the money to come in. And I'm going to, you know, we signed a contract, he signed it, I signed it, she signed it. But something happened. One of our kids got really sick, had an accident. We had to spend a good part of our fortune helping them out. Now, we can't make good on this commitment to this house. So I call up Brother John and I say, Brother John, I love you, man. And you know my intention was good to make right on this contract that we signed that. And I really want to buy this house, but I just can't buy this house now. Because I don't have the funds. And I'm too stretched out, the bank won't give me any more. Will you let me out of this contract? And John, being a good Christian man, he says, you know what, don't worry about it. He says, I'm even going to send back you $5,000, which he doesn't have to do. Right? Because it's a down payment. If I can't meet my end of the agreement, I lose that money. But he says, brother, I love you. I forgive you. No problem. He says, you rip up your copy of the contract, and I'll rip up my copy of the contract. The contract's now null and void. The contract was on the house. Did that piece of paper hurt the house in any way? The house was not changed. Brothers and sisters, when Jesus died on the cross, his last will and testament was ratified. Amen. It cannot be changed. You can't change somebody's will after the fact. The covenant has always been the law of God. It has never been changed at all. It would have had to have been changed before Jesus died. It's 
It's a very simple 10 little steps to happy life. Hmm. Amen. Eight of them can be kept by a dead person. Okay? Two of them require you to do something. The fourth, obviously, to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Now, if that's work, I think you're nuts. Okay? And the fifth, honor thy mother and father. It doesn't say honor thy mother and father if they're good people, if they took you to Dairy Queen on Wednesday nights. <coughs> All it says is honor thy mother and father. And if it's work for you to honor your mother and father, you got some real problems. Mm -hmm. It's real simple. It is by repetition of acts that habits are established and character is confirmed. You hear that, brothers and sisters? I want to read you just a little bit more and then I'm going to call it quits. Chapter 9 of Hebrews. I'm going to start in uh, verse 23. And I got a little bit of testimony to talk about. There was some interesting things that happened this morning in my church. It's been in my church, my house. <laughs> it is my church, kind of. Um, 1.30 this morning, fire trucks, rescue trucks, police officers all over in front of my house, next door to my house, and they carried somebody away, and I didn't want to be over there just like, you know, be a nosy buddy, but I don't know how anybody can sleep through that. I, uh, they're all well. Anyways, verse 23 of Hebrews 9. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of the things in heaven should be purified with these, but the heavenly things with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true. There's the type and the typology but into the heavens itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us, not yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth in the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once, in the end of the world, he hath appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And you know the funny thing about that? When I was putting this last little dot on this this morning, and when I read that, to put away sin, I'm telling you this, thunder cracked. And you can ask my mother-in-law. I don't know if you guys heard it, but it went for 15 seconds at least. If it didn't go for two seconds, it didn't go 15. I'm telling you, I never heard anything like that go for so long. And it was soon as I read that word, put away sin, and it ran right there at my window and just kept running. I got up and I said, Mom, did you hear that? She says, I never heard anything like that. For 15 seconds. That's a long time. That was amazing. God got my attention. I hope he's got yours. Amen. Our closing song will be 289. <laughs>
heart and you're asking him to take whatever little piece of it is that you're still holding on to, I ask you just to raise your hand. All right, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you see the hands raised. Lord, help us to understand things about ourselves that we don't even get. Things that we're holding on to that we don't even realize we're holding back from you. We really do in our heart of hearts want you to drive this car because we end up in the ditch. We end up just in a mess every time we turn around. We're asking you to take control, to help us, to lead us, to guide us, that we may 